All right, we're just heading down here into uh, Santa Quin, Utah on a repossession for a 2001 Chevy 2500 HD pickup truck, it's supposed to be green in color. We uh, did a Google Street View of the house. I always even do that by default before I even run an address to see what the home looks like, uh, what the layout is around the house. You know, does that have a garage, carport, what other vehicles might be parked there, stuff like that. And in this particular case, the uh, truck is, is visible in the picture from Google Street View, which means the person's been living there for some time. And you can see in the picture itself that he uh, backs the truck in on the side of the house. It's not, there's no garage. Gives me an indication of how he parks it. Uh, you know, the fact that he backs it in gives me more information. There's also supposed to be a Tahoe at the uh, given address, and they don't want us to take the Tahoe tonight, but they do want us to uh, put a GPS tracking device on it and, you know, get it tagged so that we can be sure that we know where it's at so that after we pick up the truck, if uh, they don't get a response from him, then they'll send us back out for the Tahoe, and in case they hide the Tahoe, uh, we'll be able to go track it and pick it up. It's a common thing when there's two vehicles and they only have us pick up half of the collateral that uh, they'll take and they'll go and hide the other piece of collateral before that we can come out and get it to buy them some time until they're able to uh, bring the account current and stuff. And so the finance company, we play a lot of gate, these cat and mouse games with people. And uh, that's one of the things that these tracking devices have given us an advantage on is being able to secure the asset and without them knowing that we've secured it. And then uh, if it turns out that they bring it current and everything's good to go, then we go out there, you know, late at night sometime after they've, it's back in good standing and just pull the tracking device back off the vehicle and no harm, no foul. They never know that it was done. But in the event that they go and they try to hide it somewhere, um, it just allows us to be able to just drive right to its location and not screw around with all those lost man hours and downtime trying to locate a vehicle. So we're going to be getting up here on the address in just about 10 seconds and we'll have a better idea of what we're dealing with as far as what's here tonight. It's about 11 p.m. right now, so and this is a Friday night. This guy's age. Let's see if he's the kind of guy that would be out at the bars tonight. He's two years younger than me. Well, he could be. Get the screen darked out here and go to work. There's the Tahoe backed in, and there's a boat. There's the truck sitting right there. What's up? You let me get that out of my stuff out of it? Absolutely, I can grab anything you need out of it. Okay. Quite the lift on the what is that six inches? Yeah. Oh. If there was Nebo, I would have. 
Yeah, yeah, we're contracted by them to pick it up. Oh, that's huge. The day. We don't have any options on when they have us pick it up and stuff. They just told us to come out and grab it, and then uh, you just got to give them a call. They're actually open tomorrow, Saturdays, so you just give them a buzz tomorrow, and they'll already have an email from us, and they'll have it. Pick this around for you? No, I want to pick it up from the back end because it's, it's rear wheel drive, so yeah. Yeah, this is how I'll tow it. Cars too, or? No, no, no. I say I stay out of the repair end of them. <laughs> if I was smarter as a mechanic, I would freaking do it. There's a lot of money in mechanic work, but my buddy's got a shop down in Provo. He got a huge loan and built an enormous shop. And after he built the enormous shop with extra bays and hired a bunch of guys, he's like, dude, the overhead is ridiculous. He's like, every month I've got to do a certain amount of business or I'm behind. Oh, fuck yeah. And it's oh, like, yeah, I, I, I just, that. I would not want to get into a business where I had that much overhead. He told me the numbers and I was just like, good Lord. He knows exactly how much he has to make every day. <laughs> yeah, down to the day. I mean, what's your... Yep. He, I've, seen, I've seen him grow a few gray, gray hairs in the last uh, two years. <laughs> few? <laughs> of course, whole bunch, of course right? who doesn't? Once you, once you hit 40, they just come naturally. Yeah, just... Kids turn into teenagers and drivers and... Crazy man. <gasps> What's this got? The V8 in it? 2500 HD? Yeah. Duramax. Good engine. Freaking yeah, sick. It's a, it's a good truck. I didn't ride when I got it. It's fucking put 5,000 miles on it. it leaned out one cylinder and burned the fucking thing up. What? Did they say what was it? The turbo that caused it? No, it wasn't the injector. It was bad. Yeah, see this truck, I just barely rebuilt the engine on it. And you know, I'm thinking worst case scenario, six, seven grand, dude, $13,000 to rebuild these stupid six fours. I couldn't believe, I, I learned so much about these things. I, I know enough about it now that had I known it before I bought it, I'd have stayed away from this model. Is that the Duramax? No, it's the Ford. It's got the, uh, oh, yeah. got the power stroke in it. The twin turbo and everything. Yep, as people call it, the power joke. But now that it's been rebuilt and stuff, it's, I mean, they, they do it called bulletproof they fix all the things that's wrong with them from the factory and hopefully I can get a few hundred thousand more miles out of it but what a nightmare three weeks without a you know my work truck it was yeah <laughs> that was hard to get through yeah yeah that's a, this took me a while it's hard to come up with eight thousand dollars it's hard to weather to something like down payment yep I, yep I, put I got let's see I put I actually got 20,000 out of this. I got it in December and by the time it blew last month, I, well, I never actually officially blew. I could tell it needed to go into the shop. I was smoking real bad and knocking and I actually drove it in there. My mechanic took it apart. He's like, I can't believe you actually drove this thing in here, dude. He's like, you had pieces in the oil pan. Really? Yeah. He said, I, he, he couldn't believe I hadn't sucked anything through the turbo yet, but yeah, it was crazy. Oh, it, it never. Wow. They've got videos on line of people just putting a brick on the gas pedal and just revving them out till they actually blow. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty great. There's some good ones. Whole, whole truck just starts vibrating. Because it's, it's already blown, so they just want to make a cool video of an engine actually, you know, blowing out and they rev it up as high as they can and it's just knocking loud and the whole truck's shaking and then boom, you hear it seize up, makes this like, and just, oh, yeah, they're pretty weak and then tons of smoke just comes pouring out of them. Yep, I guess you figure it's gonna go, it's gonna go. You're gonna do a whole crate motor from the ground up. You might as well smoke the one that's yeah, in there. These, these are that way. You can't, you build them. You can't overhaul 
same thing with this this four. They, they, if they'd have been the block and stuff, they can't. Then the walls are so thin already, they can't bore them out or machine them. They got to. You just got to go start with a short block, block and build it up from there. Dude, I was really hoping mine would. That's it. That's why you know Chevy. That makes sense. I was expecting worst case scenario to be right around there, but when it was double that, I was like, you got to be kidding me. What is this thing? Stamped out of gold? Yeah, what is it? It was ridiculous. But at least I'm on this side of it, not that side of it. Yeah, here. Waiting for an opportunity to put this tracking device on the Tahoe, but He's right out here with us, and I don't need. He even glances over and sees me touching it or doing anything near it. It won't, it won't work out. So I think our best bet by the, looking at the layout is going to be just to pull out of here and leave, and wait about five minutes until everything quiets down, and then I'll quietly come walking back up, stand about two, three hundred yards away from the house, and just watch it for about another five minutes, make sure he's not out here cleaning this up or doing something. And once I feel like I know he's gone back inside, I'll walk up quickly and get the tracking device on the Tahoe and go from there. Do you add the airbags? Yeah. Makes a huge difference when you tow stuff, doesn't it? I, I won't own. I won't own a truck without bags. <laughs> well, actually, on the Chevy, when you hit, when you start hitting shit going down the road. Yep. Bam, 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 bam. bam. Yep. Those, those counter it and helps you ride out quick hurry. Like, yeah. This short box, man, on the on the on the frame with the rails, it's just I can't even ride on the i215 when I'm loaded. It knock your freaking feelings out. It's just too much. If I put those. Firestone bags on there and tied them into my air compressor and it's like night and day difference. Best eleven hundred dollars I spent on that truck. My dad, he's still trying to justify buying some. I'm like, you bought a chip and you bought freaking everything else. Why wouldn't you just buy the little bag? Tell him to go to if he does decide to do it, tell him to go to Ultimate 4 x 4 in Orem. They've got it, they sell them, they got the Firestone ones, they're the best brand there and they they do the best work on them. Yeah, and they're and they're the best on labor and everything. The guy that does, he's the, he's the best welder I've ever seen. Welder? Yeah, he's he this guy the guy that, one of the brothers that's that's a family owned thing and the one that does all the welding stuff is just phenomenal. He does all the welding on my truck. <laughs> well, I heard you call up and I was like, where the fuck did they go? <laughs> come out. You got some damn good ears because very few people can hear this truck. It's so quiet. He's kind of muffled down, huh? Yeah, I, I like it nice and quiet. Yeah. It's my little black ninja. So, how do you get into this? Do you just a tow company? Is that what no, I do, I do repossession only. I actually stay out of the towing end of stuff. I don't like to do the towing and the parking enforcement stuff. I leave that to the tow jockeys. This is just straight repo. That's all we do. I, I got into it by accident when I was like 16 years old. My best friend's older brother owned a company in Phoenix and I just go over there after school um, and just hang out and he just started having me do little projects here and there and next thing I know he's having me make keys and then break into cars and then do personal property. <laughs> he just kind of built up from there and by the time I was 21 he had me in a, in a truck. I drove for other companies for 18 years and about 13, 12 years ago, 11 years ago, I went into business for myself and nice. I was like, why did I wait so long? <laughs> yeah, that's, you know? that's kind of what I'm doing right now, but it takes a minute to get rolling. It's something to do and feeds the family. Yep. Yep. Right, hey, thanks. Yep. Take it easy. <laughs> Get this pulled out. I gotta repick it. Big old tires, you gotta make sure you are. 
centered just perfectly. Already got the wheel secured. I'll just pull straight up down here and repick it real fast. I had someone ask me on my channel what's the biggest tire to put on this lift. As you can see, we can get pretty big. So they just kind of cradle in there. And no matter how big the tire is, you still got that rounding right there. And the bigger the tire, the more it comes out of that cradle. But pretty much you could sit right across the top of that. And if we got a tire big enough, that it just sat even across the top of the cradle there. What we do is instead of running the strap around the wheel, we go up over the axle and then down to the lift and strap it on both sides that way. So you'll get to where sometimes the tires come out so far that we can't get onto the end here. You can see I gotta go in an angle like that. And yeah, I think we'd run into a over weight comp problem before we would run into a too big of a tire problem. We have what's called a safe towing capacity on every vehicle we pick up. And this being a 2500 HD, you know, the back of the truck's the bed, so it's mostly empty. Majority of the weight's on the front. So we're not picking up that much weight off the ground. But if for some reason I had to have this thing hooked from the nose where the engine's at, I think I would be above my it's towing capacity, it's a formula. You have to do a little bit of math to actually know for sure if you're over. It's based on the extension of the lift, my, the wheelbase of my truck, the, the curb weight, of the, and then how far my lift is extended out. Every inch you extend this boom out changes the math on the STC, safe towing capacity. I've seen guys in tow trucks going down the road with a nose of their tow truck just almost pointing straight in the air you can tell the suspension's completely unloaded and that's when you know someone's really over their safe towing capacity they have no steering in the front i mean you know i can feel the nose of my truck's floating right now a little bit but i still have control and steering but not nearly as much as i would have if there was nothing on the back oh this thing's gonna be a fun one to tow down the highway you get it older trucks it's got front end they've got the wheel bearings loose or anything like that and you get a little bit of play in the wheels and as you're pulling them backwards they'll kind of want to start to sway on you something this big starts to sway a little bit and it uh, can really start to throw my truck all over the place we'll keep this thing at about 50 55 all the way back to the yard as you can see my blinker when it's flashing really fast makes the truck a lot more visible. I, I like it this way. Just easier to see. I think it's just got a higher visibility to it. Dude behind me was getting pulled over. I saw those flashing lights and I thought, dude was on me. The car was right behind me and I couldn't tell he was there. It's funny. I just barely passed that highway patrolman on the freeway. He's a buddy of mine. He always sits parked between these two towns. He turns all of his lights off and he pulls over on the side of the highway and you can't even tell he's there. He pops people all night long. 
I see him over here all the time doing paperwork late at night and I'll pull in and shoot the shit and sometimes get a drink at the convenience store and just kind of hang out. Got himself another one. But yeah, I like the uh, high visibility of the fast blinkers and I get asked at least 10 times a month in my comments if I've got a burned out light bulb because that's what it sounds like. It's the, it's the flasher, the factory flasher responding to the fact that the load resistance from the LED lights on my truck aren't creating enough of a load to slow it down so that it flashes fast, which is a bulb out indicator. And people hear me turn my blinker on in my videos and it's just, I'll, I'll, I think I'm gonna be out of answering that question until the end of time. In fact, I actually copied and pasted the answer into a template and whenever I get the question, it just I copy and paste it as my response. It's kind of a canned response I give now explaining that yes, I know about it. Yes, there's a fix for it. No, I don't want to fix it. I like it being fast. I've actually had people go as far as to email me the link to the replacement relay that uh, has the load resistance changed so that it's lower and it expects a lower draw as the LED lights you know, are different from a standard condensing bulb and they don't put as much of a draw on the system and uh, <laughs> they email me the link and say here's 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 the part it's only twelve dollars it's easy just plug it back you know plug it in and I'm like man does it drive people that crazy to hear my blinker I mean it's you know it's just a blinker driving people crazy it's just a blinker